Welcome. Welcome. Hey. I'm Halcyon. I'm here with Phenomenal. Hi, guys. We are going to be bringing to you four weeks of Burning Man Boot Camp. Burning Man Boot Camp. This is a topic that is close to my heart as well as my loins. Uh, I've been going to Burning Man for... <laughs> This will be my 22nd year going to Burning Man. How about you? Um, eighth burn. One thing that I love about this experience is that it is one of constant growth and constant learning. And each year you go, you get to try again the next year and take what you've learned and leave behind what didn't work. And so over the years, I've acquired a whole bunch of ideas and tips and tricks to try to make the experience better for myself. And I try to share them with the world. To me, Burning Man is the most powerful tool for world change that I've ever experienced. It cracks people open, it helps them find their truth so that they can share that with the world. If we're going to survive, it's not gonna be by following the paths that we're on now. It's gonna be on following new paths. And those paths do not come by us following our socialization and our indoctrination and the current educational system of consumer. It comes when we crack open and we find these alternative truths within us and find the way to heal the planet in our individual ways. So that is why this is so important to me. That is why I want to share this stuff. That is why I have dedicated most of my life in some way or another to this wacky thing that's not just in the desert, it's in cities all over the world. If you are going to Burning Man, this is when you want to start. You want to start now with figuring out what you need, chipping away at that list, checking down, making sure everything's in there so that you're not like freaking out at the last minute and you know that you've got this, you've got that. That's why we're starting now. If you're going to Burning Man, you should be starting by now. Yeah, I was gonna say, Just if you're starting now, you have got to hustle. Yeah, This is hopefully you've already got gear set aside. We've been having uh, year round meetings at Pink Heart yes. and really have been working hard for several months now. So, but that's okay. It's plenty of time, plenty of time. <laughs> Don't worry. It's Don't gonna panic. It's going to be perfect. We're going to tell you what to do. You're going to be okay. And I should also, I would urge you to think of your Burning Man experience beginning the minute you commit to going. Yes. And so everything... Even if you don't about, have a ticket yet. Everything along... Yes. There's plenty of you that don't have tickets right now are going to get them yes. before, before it's time to go. There is no right way to be a burner. There's no right way to do this. These are just things that we have found work. You should start with your survival guide. It came with the tickets. It has the very basics of what you need and what you need to know. Um, they can get that online too, right? Yes. If they don't have a ticket yet. Yes. We're also in this, we're not going to touch on the things that you've probably been hammered over and over again. We're not going to tell you that you need goggles. If you are going to Burning Man and you don't know that you need goggles, I don't know how you found this broadcast because <laughs> you are clueless. Don't be that person. <gasps> Well, you're here, therefore you will not be that person. Right. Yay, congratulations for being here. Thanks for doing what you can to be the best burner you can be. Best being as you define it, not by why we define it. Take everything we say here with a pinch of dust. <laughs> Have a blast. Let's yes. get started. Yes, let's get started. Okay, some of the things that you just, you need to have either with you or campmates need to have a few things that are just critical for fixing the basic slip-ups, mistakes, problems that you're gonna have. You're gonna need to have zip ties, duct tape, and safety pins. Fastening things. Things that can connect things to connect things. Yep. Duct tape, I like to bring a roll of pink duct tape because then you can always use it to decorate something that is ugly. You could wrap around there a little pink go. duct tape and suddenly your bike is less lame. Also, duct tape that is either silver or white or pink, you can use as a impromptu note leaving system. Right, you can put you, you can, can put your address on it and slap it onto a friend's tent or face or buttocks. Bike. Bike. <laughs> Bike. <laughs> Labeling, um, yeah, the double double purpose. Along those lines, do the same thing with your bike. Put your address on your bike for two reasons. One, you might forget where you live. Wait, wait, wait. Caveat, not your home address, your Burning Man address. Yes. If you didn't know this, but at Burning Man, your address where you live, where your tent is, where your camp is, could be 4 o'clock and B, or 8.30 and Esplanade. And, you know, if you live off of the back further streets, it, you could say 4.15, 4.20, because, you know, you're estimating. But if you put on your bicycle, this bike belongs to so-and-so, phenomenal, at... 420 and D, then if your bike 
goes missing, someone could actually bring it to you, or at least you could more you're more e- easily going to get back reunited with that bicycle. Exactly. Other people will get it back to you. You can find your way home if you suddenly forget. Yes, you're a like, lot what street do life. I live on? <laughs> and pe- the, I've definitely helped people get back to their their camps yes. who could not remember their name or, or confused. where they lived. Yeah, they're confused about the map system. Another uh, great tool to have as you're leading up to the burn, as you're just doing little crafting things, I, is a glue gun. This guy turned me on to this. This is genius. I do not know how to sew. I don't know how to solder, weld, craft in any way. However, <laughs> the glue gun will connect most things to most things. It is a godsend for doing little hemming things, for adding a piece of a patch onto something. A little Like this shirt I'm wearing could be glue gun, little strips of things onto it. It's, it's a miracle worker. <gasps> but with every great tool, there are great risks. Oh, yeah. These things get super freaking hot. If you're going to use a glue gun, always have a bowl of water nearby. Because what happens is... Look at all that residue of fur and plastic. And probably things. tips of my fingers. Right. Because what happens is you get a little bit on you. You drip some, you, you like press it down it, and it gets on you. Ouch. And you feel it immediately, and it continues to burn. If you can go straight to the water, it will stop the burning right. process. But if it just stays on you, it's just burning, 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 burning. And you, the, it's the difference between like an annoying burn and a blister. Right. So if you're going to use this... Into the water. Yeah, careful. Into the water. Or wear gloves when you're using it. I, um, uh, this week I was uh, glue gunning fur inside my 83 motorhome and I did not have a bowl of water. Oh. Because I'm like, I know what I'm doing. Right. You thought no. you've done this enough times and you burned your finger? Yes. Oh, you, you do not want to start the burn with blisters all over your hands. Right. No. You will get plenty of blisters once you get there. <laughs> Speaking of hands and blisters, gloves. Gloves are critical. You're going to want to have at least a pair of work gloves, and you're going to want to have them packed, easy to get to. So when you arrive on Playa, you want to be able to get to your gloves so that you don't get excited and start building and start your scrapes and burns and dryness dryness immediately. immediately. I, in addition to gloves, I bring like a 10-pack of color guard gloves, like that I get it from a band store. Yes. Oh, is that what color guard means? Like color guard people, people that go. Okay. And then I and wonder where you get all these Mickey Mouse gloves. Mickey Mouse. Gloves. Well, the white ones. To me, the white ones are like Mickey Mouse because right, Mickey right. Mouse wears white gloves. <laughs> okay, so these, I wear these every day. And a Those lot of people, thought, like, people were like, oh, I just thought that was a part of your fashion. I'm like, no, because my fingers get super dry. And I, I, I hate the feeling of the dry dust. I love being in the desert. Hate the feeling of the dry dust. It's not just dust. It's this alkaline pH unbalanced. Playa is like powder thin. It's not like sand. People think, oh, it's really sandy. No, it is powder, like baby powder, like thin, thin, thin dust. It sucks the moisture out of you. So it, yeah, if you can avoid getting it all up in your fingernails, you're going to have a better time. Skincare is going to be something that is so critical. A little bit of uh, self-care with your skin will go a long way. Yes. End of the week, you're going to be so appreciative of the efforts you put in packing things and keeping control of your skin. The number one thing I advise is have a spray bottle with a diluted solution of something that will... Uh, counteract the alkaline dust. Right. So vinegar or a witch hazel are the easiest ones to get at the store. Witch hazel is a little more expensive, but smells a little less gnarly. Um, you just add like a, I don't know, 50, 50, 20, yeah. 80, it doesn't matter. You just need a little bit to, to dilute, to, to counteract the dust reaction to your skin. Do you have the spray bottle? I do not, but it goes like this. <laughs> a little, you know those little spray bottles you can get at like CVS or Target or whatever, a little spray bottle. So what I do is every time I'm like in and out of, of my tent or RV, I just spray, 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 neutralize the dust, and then I throw on some coconut oil. And then I put my gloves back on. Coconut oil, because it's so warm out there, I, I keep it in a, a pump bottle. Because it will liquefy. It'll yeah. liquefy. So I just, I have it in a jar, I pour it into this pump bottle when I get there, spray a little bit of coconut oil. Good to go. I also spray it on my hands and then I put it on my nose. <laughs> if you got to hang up with seeing people put their fingers up their nose, you're going to be very bothered. Or by deal with mad. gunk that's in their nose, you know, like you're clearing gonna, it out. You're going to be amazed with how much 
you are going to be retrieving yeah. from your uh, orifices. Next on the list of things you got to have packed is wet naps. Uh, if you go to the burn, you are going to at some point want to wipe off dust without access to and time to go and take a shower or whatever you have do. Water, yeah. you have water, yeah. Have uh, water. So having a bunch of wet naps around to at least get your hands or your face or whatever, or your, or your genitals. An easy thing to do if you don't have time to shower, but you want to go more than a wet nap, I learned this from you, take a little bit of water, put it in a bowl, take a washcloth, yes. add a little bit of uh, Bronner's. Bronner's. Bronner's soap is good for everything. Um, but And then you can wipe yourself down with a diluted amount of, of Bronner's, yes. and you don't need to rinse it. Say you're getting changed into your nighttime clothes, and you're giving yourself a little shower, getting up in the armpits and the crotch and everything to freshen up, you feel so cleansed and rejuvenated, and then you can put lotion on your skin immediately after while you're nice and clean, and or additionally sunblock, and then, then you go out for the day. Or at night, I would wipe my skin down, lotion, and then put my nighttime clothes on. And I would have people hugging me at the end of the week going, you feel so soft, your skin is so amazing. What, did you just get here today? And I'm like, no, I just take care of my skin. Speaking of lotion, a uh, number of people have commented in the live broadcast that end of the day, putting lotion on your hands and then sleeping in rubber gloves is a lifesaver. Another in thing that changed my burn experience dramatically was the addition of a piss jug. Oh my God. Now, porta potties are a reality of the Burning Man experience, and we're gonna get more into porta potty etiquette. What you need to do is get a big old jug. This is the best case scenario. This one is got is a uh, kitty litter box with a large opening. This I is don't brilliant. mean to brag, but the large opening is what a guy like me needs. It just makes it easier. If you have a little bitty opening, then you have to be like. Full, very precise. Very precise, very flaccid. Um, you also want it big because, you know, overflowing your jug is almost worse than not having one at all. Oh yeah. Um, a couple tips for them. Uh, uh, bigger the opening, the better, the bigger the bottle, the better. As soon as you start using it, you might like bring, bring a big Gatorade bottle, drink it, and then use that. If you use a bottle that could be confused for anything that could be drank by anyone, including yourself, yeah. put tape on it, skull and crossbones, make it very clear that this is not Gatorade. Electrolytes secondhand. Yes. I like to get some uh, tank neutralizer from an RV store and I put sprinkle a little bit in every time I dump it because once you use it a few times you do have to go to the porta potty and dump it. You cannot throw a jug into the porta potty. No. Porta potties must only receive things that come out of your body. We'll get more into that. When you go to the porta potty, you dump it. You're going to be blown away with what atrocity has happened within right. that bottle from the time it left your body and it got hot in the sun some magic happens or dark <laughs> magic happens that is oh some so evil urine monster has tainted your pee yes. 24 hours even not even 12 hours and you're like oh. so the, the the little bit of a powder in there to neutralize it will keep you from end of the week having to confront that demon yeah every time you open the bottle helpful. wait wait Oh, wait, pee jug. There's so much more about pee jugs because I only know about how to use them because I have a penis. Some people at Burning Man do not have penises. Detachable penis. I love that song. I've always wanted one. Now I have a detachable penis. It's called a pee funnel. Okay, it's not exactly a penis, but I have different ones of those made out of silicone. Is that too much to say? I don't know. Um, so pee funnels are made for people with female anatomy that want to stand up to pee, ideally to use a urinal, go to the bathroom in a really nasty toilet where they can't comfortably sit down without minutes and minutes and minutes of cleaning first, etc. Now the pee jug thing is absolutely genius, but I didn't really embrace it fully until I got a pee funnel. Because I'm sorry, it is not easy to aim a female urethra into any kind of, it, it would need to be like this big of a target. Like, There's probably a camp that will, has activities that will help you practice that. Oh, that's right. But that's another topic. There's numerous types of pee funnels. Um, my personal favorite is the Go Girl. It looks weird, it's really squishy and floppy, but it actually just provides a good seal and it, sh it creates a nice pointy stream. Now here's the thing, I 
brought a pee jug per your recommendation last year. My pee jug was a, um, a bottle that had a handle on it. This was really helpful. Rather than like a Gatorade gallon or something that doesn't have a handle, having the handle meant I could stand up and pee or be on my knees or something on the floor and hold the jug up to my stream and not have to like aim this thing into a stationary object. And one thing that you mentioned initially that I wanna make sure that people get, because I've had people since we did that initial video that came up like, oh my God, that was such a game changer. You're you, welcome. You can use so a pee funnel in the porta potty, but because yes. you, you don't have to sit and squat. So if you're a woman and you go into a disgusting porta potty, you can use the urinal part. Yes. You can stand and avoid You don't the have to seat. look at it. You don't have to look. You don't even the... have to open the toilet. Just you don't even have to look. Like, welcome <laughs> to the joy of standing pain. Little dab of, you know, toilet paper just for any moisture. And you're like, good to go. And you can, you don't even have to pull your pants all the way down. You can just get the funnel in place, go to the bathroom, and put your pants back on. It's amazing. I, I know we spend a lot of time on, on urination. And it's, it's not just an exciting topic for both of us, but it's also... You will thank us when you have to when yeah. you can skip a long walk to the porta potty in the middle of the night. Oh, the jug! Uh, yes, the, okay. not having to go to the porta potty because you can pee in the jug is absolutely brilliant. Okay, a few more things on our list of things to get you in your shopping preparation packing. I have become a absolute dependent on parasols or uh, umbrellas. This one is a this reverse thing. opening one. It's. Super cool. Uh, it's got a cool design, so I feel like I'm being stylish. It's also dark, so it keeps out sun. Um, it's got a cool holder thing here, so I can like hang it, and it's easy to hold. Or like put your arm through it. You're gonna need a go bag, whether it's a backpack or a fanny pack, something that you just keep in it, the stuff that you're gonna need, either daytime or nighttime. I sometimes have one of each, a nighttime go bag and a daytime go mm -hmm. bag. Because the things that I need at night, like, uh, you know, headlamp is different than things I need daytime, like sunscreen. I've always had like one bag and then I'd go, oh, I need to put stuff in this for night or, oh, where's my headlamp? I got to get my headlamp. It's starting to, the sun's starting to go down. And that would be so genius to just have my nighttime stuff version, like the goggles that are clear versus the goggles that are sunglasses. Right. Exactly. Uh, lip balm, condom, uh, day and night. Sharpie. Day and night. Uh, you might figure out other things that you decide that you need a lot. A, a, a couple gifts that if you brought things to give away, some gifts to give away, uh, a, a travel version of your toilet kit, a mm -hmm. little bit of toilet paper yep. and wipes or whatever that you use. I also bring a, I have a day pack, night pack, and I have a toilet bag. And my yep. toilet bag has uh, one ply toilet paper. It's got wet naps. It's got a bag to put my wet naps in Correct. because you can't put wet naps into a toilet. Maybe hand sanitizer hand might sanitizer. be in there. Uh, but you know, just having like, uh, that way I know without thinking, I don't have to acquire and collect things and I just yeah. I stash it in the same place, get it, grab it, go. Um, I often, my pee bag or my bathroom bag is actually big enough to carry my pee jug so that when I am dumping my pee jug, I'm not telling the world I'm dumping my pee jug. Uh... I'm just going to the bathroom with a big old bag of sloshes. <laughs> when you go to the bathroom at night, you're going to want a light. Oh yeah. And a little bit on lights. You want to look around at what's going on in there. You want to first check to see is the uh, is it red or green? Is somebody in that bathroom? If there's no color, that means the lock is broken and you're going to want to knock first. Always a good idea to knock first anyways. Then you use the light to go inside. But lights in general are critical and important. You need them for a lot of reasons. You need yep. a, a headlamp and you need something to illuminate you at night. Because with the size of our city and the packed streets, and people riding in lunatic ways with lunatic mindsets, you want people to be able to see yes. you. There is a term dark wad for someone who does not have any lights on them. And people go, oh my gosh, I almost hit that dark wad. So you want to have something on you just to, as a kind of courtesy to other people who are trying to maneuver yep. that you don't become a speed bump for them. You don't be a dark wad. That's like a source of frustration, difficulty, and fear. And I mean, some people wear like a headlamp on red just yes, around their neck. around their neck. That's kind of lowest denominator, but you can do all sorts of things. You can order something uh, cool. You can make something cool. I I for like to wear this, uh, it's a Flow Toys. Is that the brand? Flo that's Flow Toys? Flow Toys that people use for like uh, LED flow stuff, but yeah. I don't know how to do that. I just think it looks cool. It's got multiple colors and it pulses. I put that on a necklace. 
sometimes I have, I have two of them. I put one in front of me and one in back of me. So bikes from behind and bikes from the front can see me and where I am. I encourage you to go way deeper in your lighting and make it super elaborate and cool and, and interactive, but you wanna have something at the bare minimum. Uh, speaking of bike lights, it's a great idea to have some sort of decorative lighting on your bike. If you end up going to a, a place where there's a lot of people at night, say a dance club or some event, there's, and there's gonna be Sound piles stage. of bikes everywhere, and you're gonna wanna lock your bike up just in case someone accidentally takes yours thinking it's yep. theirs, but even if your bike is locked and no one's gonna take it, you gotta find it. And it's gonna be disorienting, you're gonna yeah. wear it, but if you have, if you can in the darkness see some pattern or some, you know, oh, I know that my front tire is blue and the back one is red, whatever, you can go, oh, cool, I can see mine over there. I know it's about this area. It makes it so much easier. Oh, yeah. You know how there's art installations that are like, there at least until they either get burned or get taken away. There's other things that might look like an art installation, but it's actually like an art car right. that moves. So don't lock your bike to or next to, like I never lock my, like I can't lock my bike to a piece of art unless it was. Well, no, you can't. Don't do that. Never, don't do never that. lock your bike to a piece of art. But let's say there's a art installation over here of like this, you know, um, this thing that you love and it's like a, a couple and it's made out of wood. And you're like, oh, the wooden couple, the wooden couple. You could put your bike there and then walk to the sound stage and know that your bike is somewhere near the wooden couple. That way, because you know the wooden couple is not going to move, you can find the thingy, the, the art installation, and then find your bike. That helps a lot because everybody's bikes have lights on them and you will be like, oh my God, there's all these lit up bikes. How the heck am I supposed to find my bike? But if you do but, that next to the Zusa mutant vehicle, yeah, Zusa mutant vehicle could move yeah, on when and then yeah. you're lost. Dark wads are an issue. So are light wads. If you have your headlamp, you, you, you wanna remove it, turn it off if you're going to be socializing. A headlamp, you should only be worn maybe if you're biking or if you're working. If you are gonna be interacting with human beings and it is so annoying to have someone shining a light into you. Remember that, that you have a headlamp on. If someone's like, hey, so-and-so, and you're like, yes, and you notice your light shine on them, switch it to the red or whatever so that you're not shining it in their eyes. Speaking of Zusa Mutant Vehicle, a uh, captain of Zusa just said that last year they had to cut about a dozen bike locks uh, of people that locked themselves to their vehicle. Whoa! Also, a lot of the LEDs that you buy online, the cheap ones, are like blinky, 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 blinky. Notice that if you have to look at it, would you enjoy that? If you have a blinky, 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 blinky thing right here and people are trying to talk to you, right. I find it to be very annoying and, and to, to have like blinks. It was I'd too much have a, a, a constant light. Uh, ease up on on the, well, there, the the light shows that people have to. There's deal LEDs with. now that are bright as. Have a light, not too bright, not too dark, just Goldilocks. Goldilocks. Again, there's no right way to burn. These are personal attitudes and experiences, and yep. your experience could vary dramatically. And, and I hope it does. Some notes on phone and camera. Uh, some most people's. Phones are so good with their cameras that they don't bring an additional camera. But if you have a camera or phone, make sure that you establish a way for people to return it to you if you forget it somewhere. Yeah, so you lose it. A, if a camera, take a picture of your contact information. For example. You know, have your, your, your playa address, your phone number, your real address. Please your, return to name and email. So that if someone finds it, they can get it back to you. Uh, same with your, as we said, with your bicycle. The photo uh, can, of it is brilliant, uh, You though. can take a photo on your phone of your contact information, maybe even what you look like if you want. And or like pink heart at 830 Esplanade. And then put that as your lock screen. So if yes. someone finds your phone, they can see and, and get it back to you if they have the motivation to do so. Well, I'll talk more about just photography in general in, another, in a later week. And the last thing that I have on my list of things to just talk about in terms of preparation and packing is clothing. And outfits. One, outfits. Of, one of the things I get asked more than anything is, where do I find Burning Man clothes? Yeah. And I go like this. <sighs> There's no such thing as Burning Man clothes. Oh, burner clothes. There, the, Burning Man is not a, a scene that you're going to step into and try to fit in. Burning Man is your experience to do with it whatever you want. So you get to wear whatever you want, with the exception of clothing that has logos of brands from the default world. You want to be free to express yourself in whatever you want. If you just want to be comfortable, 
and wear cargo shorts and a t-shirt, you can do that. If you want to be a Viking and wear a helmet with horns, horns are a little tacky, I think, but you can do that. <laughs> Anything is okay. And if you want to wear fur boot covers and a tutu, a tutu and some of the things that are become established burner styles, or you're welcome raver. to do that too. Yeah. But, but do it because, oh, I've always wanted to wear that. Yes. Not because, oh, that will make me look like a burner. Don't try to fit in. There is no fitting in. Burning Man is the fitting out. Express yourself. Express yourself. I like to think of it as an opportunity to go big. be a superhero. You can be silly, sexy, funny, ridiculous, naked, whatever you want. Right. And also, just for the record, I avoid using the word costumes. To me, a costume is something that you put on to pretend to be something that you're not. Right. I have Burning Man outfits, which are simply different ways to express different parts of myself. Right. And I urge you to embrace that idea. You're going to bring outfits for Burning Man, not costumes. Right. And you know what's a cool thing I realized recently when I decked out a hat that I have? Um, I decked out the hat with some lights. Light bulb moment. This is a hat and a light. So now if I wear this hat at nighttime, it doubles as a thing that you can see. From behind too. And that helps me see a little bit. And it's also a fashion accessory. I tend to think that it's a lot cooler to wear something that you put together than something that's cool that you purchased. Right. I highly recommend going to thrift stores. You don't have to spend a ton of money. I like to go into the women's section. One of my favorite things to do is find women's jackets, cut the sleeves off because they won't fit because women's bodies tend to be different than my massive Muscular frame. Muscular shoulders. But, but if I cut the sleeves off, I can take a, a large women's coat and turn it into a really cool burner vest. Have some fun. Uh, glue gun a piece of a per one piece of clothing to another piece of another clothing. It, really, let, let, it, let it out. The most important thing about your outfit is it needs to be adventure ready. Yes. You want to pick outfits that allow you to participate in a parade, an obstacle course, a... Bike ride. Participate. Climb something. It's okay to have an outfit that is purely for pageantry, where you maybe make a, a walk around center camp and something Go take that's photos really, in it. Take photos. That's fine. But you're going to be bummed if like all you heels. can do is just like stand right. there. You, you, you want to have clothes that you can you know Move. get dirty, crawl around, ride a slide. If you can't do that in your outfit, make sure you bring plenty of outfits where you can. Oh yeah, like you don't there is something about a fishnet stocking on a nice butt cheek that looks so good. But don't forget that if you're wearing fishnets and booty shorts or underwear or whatever and you're whatever else with your outfit, you have to deal with that in the porta potty. Do you want to strip? Do you want to be in a zip-up onesie that you have to take off, unzip, pull all the way down, try not to touch the floor with it, and go to the bathroom? No, you do not. You mentioned uh, a nice butt, and I wanted to make sure that people understand that your butt is nice. Any fishnet butt. Any is fishnet nice. butt is nice. Something that's amazing about Burning Man is that you will fall in love over and over and over with the sexiest people in the world. And it's not because they look like a certain type of model. It's because they allow their truth to shine. Right. And when people just are comfortable and alive and vibrant, they're so fucking sexy. And that's you. Yes. Yeah, so something that you feel comfortable in that maybe stretches yourself a little bit, maybe something that in incites your inner superhero and power, makes you feel a little bit, woo, that's what you want to wear. I wanted to make a little note about shoes. Don't be so concerned that you with the fashion that you sacrifice your comfort because you're not going to be having a great time if you're like, I don't want to go dancing anymore because my feet hurt. Like, ditch those stupid shoes and wear something that makes sense that you could dance in all night. I wanted to talk, a, just end with some thoughts about why we're doing this. Reason one is because I truly believe that Burning Man is an agent of change is a powerful tool. It helps change us into our best versions of ourselves. It helps us to discover our hidden talents, our gifts, and helps us to find a training ground 
on Playa to practice this version of ourselves so that we can bring it into the default world. So the better that we understand the principles and the better we understand the culture, the more we can become the burners that make the event better, that make the event more transformative for each other. And I, I believe, I believe in the power of it. I can see how it has changed my life and how the way it affects me helps me to affect others. And when we act from this authentic place, the ripples that change the world are undeniable. If you have comments, ideas, tips, anything that you think we should know. Uh, Questions. Maybe you think that we got it all wrong. Halcyon at hugnation.com. And uh, this is a collaborative process. Oh yeah. It's communal effort. That's one of the principles. So thank you for everything that you do, all the courage you're showing. You are exactly where you're supposed to be, even if you haven't started packing. <laughs> and we cannot wait to see you in the dust. Oh, where are we going to be? Pink Heart. Pink Heart. Hopefully you can come by. We will have chilled cucumber water all day and night. We will have vegan coconut milk ice cream oh, on so Tuesday, yummy. Wednesday, Thursday in the afternoons. The highlight of my year and life is the Pink Ride, which happens Thursday at noon at Pink Heart. Come wear pink, bring your bike, and if your heart isn't blown open, money back. <laughs> Thank you for letting me co-host. This has been really Thanks fun. Thanks for being here. And Thanks for being here. Let's hope you got some, something out of this information. We will see you in a week with more information or sign up for the newsletter and get them in your inbox yeah. as they're available. We love you. We love we'll you. We'll see you at home.